shut the fuck up and listen. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is, as you guessed from the title, how to spot a fake friend, family member, or fake people in general. And if you're new here, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Janae, but you can call me Soul. Um, that is my stage name. Um, I plan on being like huge in the future so you know yeah so today's video is going to be a little bit different from the last three videos where i'm being a goofball and just doing my natural weird ass shit but i kind of want to drop some knowledge on my women and or men whoever watches this video i want to drop some knowledge in regards to how to spot these fake people and i know there's a lot of youtube videos about the about this certain topic on youtube but these are, I feel like, are gonna be like a little bit more innovating. So these are my top 10 tips of how you can uh, determine if someone is jealous of you or being fake with you or any type of matter. So also do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you can see more videos every week, even though I've been gone for the last two and a half weeks, going on three almost but your guys are gonna get a lot more videos definitely hopefully this week so for these tips thank you so much so tip number one how to spot a fake friend family member and or people in general number one intuition energy discernment all go into one so if you guys don't know what intuition is intuition is a gut feeling um according to the dictionary here it says direct perception of truth keen insight so let's start there so energy is also the aura aka in my opinion it's the aura it's the atmosphere like it's the atmosphere of that person and discernment is the ability to trust your own judgment and your own understanding of what you're feeling with this person or is their aura like giving you like weird vibes or is it just not is it is it not meshing or aligning with you in any term or state so for example when you meet someone for the first time do you instantly get this anxiety feeling do you ever get this instinct to not be around this person but you give the benefit of the doubt which is never a good thing to ever give anybody a benefit of the doubt in my opinion but when you give someone the benefit of the doubt despite what your intuition is always like like your little angel on your shoulder like hello hello uh i don't like this person's energy i'm seeing something a little bit more than you are you getting that anxiety build up like is your anxiety like flaring up when you're near this person like you also have to ask yourself when it comes to just energy in general is the aura dirty is it clean how do you feel around this person? Ask yourself those questions. When I meet people for the first time, I will either I either can tell if I'm gonna get along with them or not, or they're gonna use me or not. For I did have this so-called friend. When I first met this person, my intuition was just like ding 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 ding. Hello, like your this fr person is not your friend. Like they're using you. They're just lonely, and so are you, bitch. Like hello, like this. My anxiety flared up with her all the time, and whenever she asked me these weird ass words like "Do you trust me?", I would always hesitate. I would always hesitate tremendously because i knew in my gut that i could not trust her but i guess i like the idea of having friends even though like you know you know go out with people and stuff like that but a good like i just wanted the idea of having a friend for the moment and even if for that moment i should have dead ass cut it off i'm like i don't think your energy and i meshed that well when i first met them because later down the line that person did me dirty I may end up doing a story time on that, but that depends if I beat her ass or not. Depends on how I'm feeling in that moment. Number two, boundary violator. We all have a boundary where we tell someone, oh, you know what? I don't like how you did this to me. I don't like how you did this and I don't like how you did that. They're like, well, you should be feeling no type of way. I must still continue to do it, da, 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 da. And even when they say, oh, you know what? Yeah, you know, I'm sorry. Like, I'm not gonna do it no more, but they still do it. That is not a friend that is somebody that you need to watch out for because if they continuously keep on doing the same shit that they said that they weren't going to do but they continue to do it not for you they are not going to align with your current energy at this time and also here's another good question you need to ask yourself because sometimes we can also be fake with ourselves now hear me out hear me out are you your own boundary violator 
For example, I know that I have homework, I have things to do that need to be prioritized, but yet I do the opposite by not doing anything of that at all and I procrastinate and I self-sabotage, which is also another boundary violator low key if you think about it. Am I being my own boundary violator? Am I violating my own boundary knowing damn well that I should be listening to my intuition? Oh, you know what? Yeah, they might've done me wrong this time, but you know, maybe I'll see you know, later, despite what your intuition is telling you later on down the road, like this person is not your friend, but you continue to hang out with them. It's happened to me too. So, you know, like as I'm moving and progressing through life as a young woman, I, I'm still learning to set these boundaries and understand that I can also, I'm also a boundary violator of my own. Am I my own best friend? Am I going to listen? to myself and understand that my intuition is never gonna stir me wrong. My intuition comes from source, it comes from God. Cause it can't just be people, cause like it can also be yourself. Have you violated your boundaries today? Tip number three, victim mindset and gaslighting. Gaslighting is a manipulating tactic that is used on the victims who are being manipulated into questioning their own judgment. Do you always have that friend that was like, even though you know that they did wrong, you held them accountable for your shit, even though you held yourself accountable for shit, did you always have that friend or family member or whoever play the victim, knowing damn well that they started it first? You as a person hold yourself accountable. You need to have people who are like-minded around you and are willing to lead each other and help each other proceed without feelings of insecurity. So when you're around people who have a loser mindset, hey, like I'm leveling up, are you coming with me or not? And if they're like, what do you mean? What if I'm comfortable right here? Comfortability means stagnancy. People can talk about, oh, I dream of doing this, I dream of doing that, I'm dreaming of doing this, but yet they're not doing it. So you know, for a while when I was growing up, I had that bit of a mentality where I'm gonna do this and do that, but I always stop because I never saw the finish line. And then I realized that I had to like progress I had to take actions in order to get where I wanted to go in the next two to three years. I can talk all the time I want about like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But if I'm not putting, if I'm not putting in the work, then God is not going to reap what I sow. I'm still going to progress and I'm still going to move forward in my action plans regardless if I have 30 subscribers or not. I know where I'm heading is going to align with everything that is going to happen for me in my future. I had to put myself in a leadership mindset. I've always been a leader, but I always had people around me that put me down. I grew out of that victim mindset of where I'm tired of people, like, you know, the little C Cinderella story, like, oh, Oh, I'm tired. So yeah, understand that you can have people around you that will constantly want to stay stagnant and want to stay in that little oppressor mindset or whatever the freak may be, but you see so much more for yourself. You do not need to be around no one who is going to want you to coddle them and like, oh, oh, poor baby. Like after a while, that same excuse gets old. Because if I'm doing all this healing and self journey shit, then what the hell are you doing? Always reevaluate every season, every day every second reevaluate your life it's okay not to take you know everything serious obviously but you know I'm not gonna coddle nobody like okay this happened to you all right I understand that and I'm sorry that it is and I had a lot of shit happen to me too but I progress and I move forward but I do the healing work number four money the giver or taker dynamic have you ever had a friend that always asks you for money or you're always constantly giving them money and they're always gonna be like oh I'm gonna pay you back oh I'm but they never did Did you say yes? Yes, okay, good, good. I'm glad that you and I had that same thing. You are that friend that will give the shirt off your back for somebody if they need it. But when you need something, all of a sudden, nobody's nowhere to be found. Like, it's a whole day. Jack by Santa Claus, he almost tied himself back to some robbers. He pulled out a pistol and was like, those are you on crack? Day moment. Where they at? You know what I mean? I had this so-called friend that I am no longer friends with, thank God. We were having our little nature day and stuff like that. I always noticed afterwards she would always want to go get something to eat. Knowing me, being the friend, I'm always paying. But you out here scamming people with the pyramid scheme and the $6,000 grants from California unemployment at that. Yeah, so yeah, I, I threw a little shade in there, y'all. It's no joke. I was always observing her because like there was one day I was like, you got money problem. And knowing my psychic ass, I can, I'm, I'm clairvoyant. I can smell it. And she was like, no, I don't got money problems. No, I don't got money problems. Then why am I always paying? I don't always have to pay for her. I wanna see if you're my so-called sister like you say that I am. Because one thing about me, 
I'm always going to pour into you if you pour into me. I would lose $60 a fucking day having this person drive me back home. Normally, I wouldn't have any problems with, you know, giving anybody money. I help the needy, not the greedy. But this time, this needy was really greedy and I was just not here for it. So you just gotta use really good discernment. Once I cut this person off after I realized that like this person was just using me for money and not really being a genuine friend, then my money skyrocketed. When you cut toxic people out of your life, I bullshit y'all not, money becomes amazing. It may seem lonely at first, but I bullshit you not, the money is always great. It's better to be at peace than to be chaotic because Jesus doesn't like chaotic. Tip number five, not actively listening. And comprehension is, you know, not that common. Trying to tell them something important and it's like, give me a second. They're not freaking listening. So here's another example. I was always listening to this per person's problems. Mind you, I have done this before, but I told my friends prior before, hold me accountable if I talk about something too much. I told this person, like as much as I kept on hearing about this person over and over and over again. And I was like, give me a second. <sighs> can we please talk about something else? But when I actually, cause I don't ever talk about my problems with any of my friends. Not like that. No, I don't. Cause I keep things to myself. Hey, this is what's been going on these last few weeks or something like that. You know, basically cut me off to talk about something else. And I was like, what the fuck? Like I was talking to you about something that has been bothering me for some weeks, you know, like, can we talk about this real quick? They're still, you know, like yapping and yapping about this other subject and you just kind of pretty much, you know, just stare clear in the back, you know, like just be like, fine, we're not gonna talk about it, whatever. That's a friend that doesn't give a fuck about you, but they wanna make sure, listen to their problems. That's not a friend that's actively not listening to you. Tip number six, body language. This is tying into number five as well. When you're talking, is the person really giving you their full undivided attention and body language can tell a lot about a person. If I go on a date and I'm sitting like this, I can already tell that I'm not already gonna like this person. I'm already bored of you. I don't wanna deal with you anymore. Number seven is listen more than you talk. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by listen more than I talk? That means shut the fuck up and listen. Cause a lot of people tell on themselves every freaking day. When I'm on a date, I don't even talk that much. I don't even give that much. Like I'll give a little bit, but not a lot. For example, whenever I'm on a date, I ask certain questions. What is your favorite animal and why? This person, he said a butterfly. And I was like, how come? He was like, well, you know, like they're carefree and you know, like they just like, they don't stick to one thing. Like they just like, you know, they're all over the place. And I kind of like that, da da da. And I was like, Oh, okay, that's interesting. The second question I asked, what animal you feel represents you? This motherfucker said leopard, you know, they're courageous, blah, blah, blah. Now, hold on, you're gonna be, I know you're asking like, what this, does this have to do with anything? Listen to this. The reason why I asked these two questions is this. When you first meet somebody, they're going to give you a false representative, which is tying into question number two, what animal you feel represents you. He said a leopard, but his favorite animal was a butterfly. So that will tie into the first question, his true intentions with me. It wasn't gonna be nothing serious with this person. When I realized this and you know, I was creating more scenario questions to understand who this person was fully, I realized right then and there that I was just not gonna like this person like whatsoever. You better handle me properly because if you're not handling me delicately, then we are gonna have a problem. Don't manage their behavior, manage your expectations. Number eight enabling so did you ever had a friend that always tells you to be yes you need to choose and pick your battles but at some point you got to call people out on their bullshit hold them accountable including myself i'm not gonna be you know the person that like not gonna take accountability how are you gonna right your wrongs if you don't take accountability like people always tell you oh be the bigger person be the bigger person i'm like that just gives people the comfortability to keep on playing with you and who is gonna be dealing with that? Not I, not I at all. No, 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 no. So here's another example. So I am no longer friends with this girl either, but that was because I was outgrowing her. She went to jail for a very long time. Mind you, I could have been there a little bit more, but you know, 
outside of jail like you know life still goes on so called said that she came out a changed person but the actions were speaking different i was always getting on this person constantly about her fucking you already know how this is gonna go so why are you still doing the same crap that you were doing before and her friends who were the enabler that i didn't know because we were all in a fucking group chat i hate group chats i think they're so fucking you know we just need to love her for who she is for right now like she's gonna have to learn on her own and you know we gotta be okay with that and i'm like i don't need to be okay with that shit like you can be okay with it but i'm not gonna be okay with trying to always constantly tell somebody like you're being stupid you're being wrong you need to stop but it's funny how this person always try to like say that i'm wrong for something i was like baby i'm a fucking grown-ass woman i'm pretty much fucking self-aware but in that moment you know what i realized in that moment you cannot be concerned with another person's growth only but your own number nine sabotaging your creative endeavors slash negative talk now we talked about this previously before the negative talk where they would say slick shit and then try to play it off as a joke like bitch i'm just playing knowing damn well but you're not fucking playing if you tell them about an accomplishment oh yeah friend like i'm graduating uh, this day i'm excited and you know they're like oh you know that's a lot you know i don't think you're going to make it that far like or are you gonna tell them oh i'm gonna move over to this state and they're like oh you're not um here's another example selena versus yolanda saldivar yolanda saldivar was jealous of selena she wanted everything that Selena had. Fame, beauty, fortune. And she stole her freaking money. Self sab like sabotaging Selena's. People are fucking dangerous. People uh, and she also wanted to be like Selena. So you gotta realize people are fucking dangerous, okay? People are dangerous as shit. You guys have got to be careful with these type of people. And here's another example. Um when I was stripping, and this was like a few weeks ago. When I was stripping, I wanted a so-called friend to record my performance. And I did like all my flips and tricks on there on that little last stage. And this person only got the last minute of it. But prior before that, I pressed record. And then when the person came back, they were like, you didn't tell me to record like you said not to. And I'm like, it's not that hard. I, I literally already pressed record. So all you had to do was just put it right there. So she basically stopped everything and then just... That person definitely reminded me of Selena versus Yolanda Saldivar. Yeah, she was just on some weird shit and I was just not here for it. Like she even tried to dress like me at one point and that was even scarier. You guys just need to be careful because if they downplay your character or try and downplay you in general, even when you're not around, yeah. Number 10, your struggle period excites them, AKA bad circumstances on your behalf when you're going through a struggling period where you don't have no money your car situation is terrible home situations even messed up anything that you are going through your friend gets excited about that they're finally happy that you're on your ass like you're on your downfall i remember recently i went out for a friend's birthday party you know and normally i don't ever go out but this was my first time actually really going out with actual friends and i fuck with this girl because that was my baby and i love her so much so shout out to my bitch even though this was the birthday girl's birthday i kind of did a little bit of an overboard this person came with me to my homegirl's birthday party when this person went to go somewhere real quick you all will always check on my friends just to make sure that they're good like if they're not by my side i was gonna like text them like hey just want to make sure you're good after like a certain amount of time has passed by it got really hot okay and it ended up passing out and hitting my head on the car and mind you this is my homegirl's birthday party she didn't even have to take care of me but the fact that she did she will always remain one of the realest bitches ever to me because you you didn't even have to even take care of me but the fact that she has such a caring heart i will always make sure that she's okay i will always make sure that her kids are just as okay because for real i don't know where i would have been or if or if anything would have happened to me had she not gave a fuck while i was cooling off and like you know the wigs get high you know like literally wearing a helmet in the motherfucking summer okay bitch so when the, the other friend comes back and my homegirl and i'm sitting here just all like this i told her i was like i'm sorry girl i passed out the girl just looks like me she was like oh really and it kind of excited her i was like what the fuck 
I was like, here I am passed out. And you're like, really? You didn't even see if I was okay. You didn't even see if I needed any water or anything. Like, you just did not give a fuck. And, you know, people are out here really are crazy. People really are out here that don't genuinely give a fuck. They don't have, like, a good heart like you do sometimes. And that's really crazy. And mind you, you can be the villain and the hero in someone else's story or whatever the case may be. But from my understanding after looking at that, this reminded me of another situation where I was in where I was j left alone, passed out on the concrete. But we're not gonna get into that. But when I tell y'all I got done dirty by a lot of bitches, I, I got fucking stories. Like, I'm not kidding. I even said this before. I even told these bitches, I was like, for real, if I ever see you low key, I don't know if I'm whether if I'm gonna just ignore your ass or beat your ass. So like, I may be spiritual, but you know, when are we gonna draw the line between fake and forgiveness? I'm sorry that was probably like a lot, but I really do hope like this gives you a clarity for you to like do some self-evaluation, look around. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I really do hope you guys enjoy this. Comment, let me know you guys' experiences with other, you know, people. Bye, bitches. See you later, my gorgeous girls.